All right, we've just rewired uh, all the lights in this arbor. We've got 10 coach lights. It's all been re uh, pulled down and a new one's been built. So we'll just have do a bit of a walkthrough and show you exactly how we've done it. We've just staggered each coach light. We've got one here, but we haven't gone on the opposite side. So we've just staggered it and put one over here. Same thing, we've missed that side and, and staggered it to here all the way through. So you constantly got a bit of light at night all the way through on this path. It's a, a decent length, this arbor. So we've got two coach lights on the very end. We've used conduit over the whole job. 1.5 twin and earth cable is what we've used. We've set up a, a weatherproof isolating switch so you can manually turn it on. But these lights are controlled at night via a sensor. So this is where the power comes out of the ground. So we've put metal protection over it and just a couple of green plugs and screws. And we come up the wall here, so that's all mechanically protected conduit, weatherproof switch right here. So we'll turn that on. We've only just um, livened up the circuit. So you can see there's all the coach lights all working right now. So this is our manual override. So if they do want the lights to stay on for a period of time at night, they can. Just turn those off. And then on the other side there, we've got a clipsal sensor, which will operate any movement in front of here. We'll, uh, we'll turn all these lights on. So all the, hole, the holes that we've actually drilled in all the um, posts, we've actually drilled them on angles so that the water can't go into any termination points. So from our coach light, we've, we've always come down on an angle so the water can't travel uphill. So every coach light's been drilled like that. Even this switch, when we've had to get cables from this side to the back, to the rear of this switch, we've drilled on a slight down angle so the water can't come up. So it's just something to think about when you're, when you're drilling through. Just be mindful of when you're drilling through that the water's not gonna go into your hole and then run down into your light. Uh, we've actually got all our, um, our holes going up to every coach light. So there's probably maybe a 15, 20 mil um, rise on, uh, on every single one. All right, so what we've done here, or every single bend, we've been able to put in a bending spring and cut it straight through so it sits nice and flush. So there's no um, couplings and flexible conduit. Uh, you'll notice on this job too, we, we haven't used any flexible conduit just for the um, they have a lot of possums and a lot here too, and we don't want them to eat through. And uh, especially being weathered, it's outside, so there's no, we haven't used any flexi conduit at all. Uh, and then we've just done sets at the top here, around, instead of using flexible conduit. So we've actually got a two-way junction box right here, and another one on the other side there. They're purely just set up for spare so if she, the customer actually wants uh, some spotlights, it's easy for us to drill straight through into these um, junction boxes and we can install some spotlights straight away if she feels that she needs more light in the driveway. But, uh, and yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, just trying to think ahead and uh, just planning things like that rather than have to pull everything apart just to install a couple of extra spotlights. So here I've done a, a slight set, same thing using a bending spring come around and then I've had to um, do a different type of angle here and bend it all the way 90 degrees so that when I can cut it flush and sit it back in there it all looks nice and I'm not filling it with, with silicon everywhere because when we've drilled our hole from here up to our coach light we've gone up to the coach light. Right, all the external part, it's all in 20 mil conduit. We've saddled it all the way along because there's going to be ferns and trees growing over everything here as well. Um, and we've got a, uh, a three-way box. So we've got uh, two cables coming down to every single coach light and we've done that all the way through on both sides. I can fix you. Yeah, I can fix you. All right, so we've also ran a, uh, a sensor at this end as well. So both ends have got sensors. So the customer comes in from this way. It's gonna turn all these lights on. So what we've done is we've ran an SDI from here all the way up to the other sensor so they can both work in together.